Welcome to Hands On Chemistry with me, Mr. Hands. Today we're looking at 6.1.1, calculating the rate of chemical reaction. You've done loads of experiments about rate of reaction. You've done experiments where the mass has decreased, maybe with marble chips reacting with acid, and the mass has gone down because carbon dioxide has been given up. That's one way of measuring the rate of reaction or the, the change. Another one is you've vo measured the volume of gas given off when magnesium is reacted with acid. You've measured the temperature change in an exothermic or endothermic reaction, and you've known when it's finished because the temperature has stopped changing. You've looked at the, a product disappearing, and you've looked at um, a product forming. Remember when thiosulfate produced sulfur as a solid and the cross disappears. You've got to know that to calculate the rate of reaction, you either take the quantity of the reactant divided by the time taken, or the quantity of the product formed divided by the time taken. Now the units, the units for quantity can be grams if it's a solid, or centimetres cubed if it's a solution. Never say amount. Um, or moles of a substance, especially for higher tier where we can do calculations with moles. The unit of rate is grams per second or centimetres cubed per second. Now, for higher tier, the gradient of a quantity, uh, the gradient of a quantity of a reaction or product versus time graph is the rate of reaction. And the way you work it out is from the curve that you normally get, you get a ta draw a tangent line. And as you draw a tangent line, you calculate the gradient of the tangent line, and that will give you your rate. Make sure you know that, please, before you move on. Welcome to Hands On Chemistry with me, Mr. Hands. Today we're looking at 6.1.2, factors that affect rate. There are five factors that affect the rate of reaction, and you need to know what they are. They are concentration, surface area, pressure, temperature, and catalysts. Now, if you want to increase the frequency of collisions as there are more particles in the solution, that's a description of changing the concentration. If you want to increase the frequency of collisions as the reacting particles are more spread out, that's an explanation of surface area. And if you increase the frequency of collisions as the gas particles are closer together, that's a definition of pressure. Remember, to increase the rate of reaction, you have to increase the concentration. You have to increase the surface area. You have to increase the pressure. Now, increasing the temperature increases the frequency of collisions because the particles collide with more energy. There will be more collisions with greater than the activation energy. Remember, the activation energy is the minimum energy required for a chemical reaction to take place. Different reactions require a different catalyst. Not one catalyst works for every reaction. Wouldn't it be great if it did? Um, enzymes are biological catalysts, and you've learnt about them in biology. And a catalyst lowers the activation energy by providing a different pathway for the reaction. Now, the, reaction is not, the catalyst is not used up in the reaction, so the catalyst does not appear in the chemical equation. You've got to be able to spot that. Make sure you can before you move on. Thanks for watching Hands On Chemistry. If you like this video, please press like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you liked, thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe.